yeah, big party, I guess. <laughs> do, you do know you're in the you're in the picture. This you, is the event. Yeah. You do know your picture's there. Right. And people still come. I know. Isn't it incredible? <laughs> people are very forgiving. He's the guy. <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk about uh, ways of joining metal. Basically, uh, how many different types of uh, metal joining can you think of? Cold connections. Cold connections. Solder. Solder. Braze. Yeah. Well. Yeah, we're talking about joining. You can also set, which is basically a subset of uh, cold cold connection. connection, but you can set one piece and another piece and then join it almost like it was a cabochon or a stone or something like that. Uh, that comes into play when you're doing things like uh, enamel, where you've made a piece and you can't solder it on, so you then have to basically take your enamel and then set it like you would a stone. Uh, cold connections, very, very versatile. I really recommend that people look into that and you know, practice that and get comfortable with it. It's a whole different type of jewelry, and you can do some really, really neat things. But you, when you say cold connection, you're sounding like it's something other than putting something together with a loop. Rivet. Rivets. Rivet. Mm -hmm. um, when you take, I don't want to get off on too much of a tangent, but you can take any two pieces of metal and you just okay. put another piece of metal through them and then hammer it to yeah. enlarge it. I just didn't think of rivet. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, absolutely. If you and if you do it well, it becomes very decorative, and then you know you can incorporate things into your designs that are heat sensitive. Uh, you know, and then you can work with things like leather and uh, all sorts of stuff. Wood. I've even seen people use wood. So, but the foundation of jewelry is solder. Uh, that is the end-all, be-all of pretty much everything that we do, and you need to get good at it. And it intimidates a lot of people. Uh, it, it tends to be a little on the difficult side, and people get very, very frustrated. I'm going to run you through the basic ring demo that I usually do for people. And I'm going to talk about... No you use copper? What's that? You're going to use copper? Yeah. Are you going to use copper solder? No. You're going to use silver solder? Absolutely. I use silver solder for everything. Uh, the copper solder is wonderful stuff. It has a the absolutely perfect... Here, I'll even show you some. I have some at home. That's why I have trouble. Okay. That's why I'm here. Then we'll talk about that too. All right. Really want to try. I'm saying that you know, for the, the bangles over there, I can't forget to look at that because <laughs> I saw a picture of this stuff. Those things Usually are really I neat. Yeah, that I saw, I think it was on the website or something. Uh, we I can't forget it before I leave, <laughs> <laughs> but I already forget. We we sat down and timed it, and it took me about nine, ten minutes to make one start to finish with polish, everything. Really? Mm -hmm. With, a show? With what, a mill? <laughs> uh, one of these guys. Oh, really? Yeah, you put them in. Oh, I haven't seen yeah. that yet. Cool. Alright. Can I see it? Oh, that's beautiful. <gasps> yeah, super easy. I want to do that. And you sure? Is this copper? Mm -hmm. I never work with copper. Copper is cheap. I know, with. but and it's a really nice metal. In Hawaii, copper. we don't have a lot of. We have only one store, because and it, they don't teach a lot. You know, they. But it turns our skin color. That's why. Yeah, All right. This is okay. Later. So. I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you bug them enough, they'll give you a class on it. <laughs> Now, the way I'm cutting this ring is not, if you're working with precious metals, this is probably not what you want to do. This is pretty wasteful. Yep. Come on. It really only works well if you cut both of them at the same time. Oh, would you stop? I've done it. 
done this a thousand times. That's why we're asking you about that. Use that you use a silver to solder the copper? Mm -hmm. I didn't know you so, can do that. Uh, the, uh, but it looks like this after, or no, you can get this out. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. There's, there's good reasons why I choose to use silver solder over the copper solder. Uh, the copper solder is a, is a spot-on match for, for the color of the copper. But it tends to be a little more brittle. And it's not a problem if you're going to leave it just as it is once you're finished. But if you're going to hammer it at all, mm -hmm. which I always do, it, it lasts for a couple good hits. And then once you start to thin the metal out at all, it, it will snap. Soldering. Excuse me, I put up my nerd glasses here. All right. With soldering, you want to make sure that the joint is as close as possible. This is not pretty because I messed up my saw, but please forgive me. I know you. You don't forgive anybody. I forgive you. I'm back here, aren't I? <laughs> I just harass you about it full of water. You, you and your engineer ways. <laughs> okay. Not great, but not bad. Okay. Solder is not the world's best choice for filling a gap. Right. So you want to get it as close as possible. And I encourage you to use copper at the beginning uh, with the silver solder because it gives you a very good visual indication when you do the solder joint correctly. All right. When you get done with this, if you do it perfectly, that seam right there will be one simple silver line and nothing else. Mm -hmm. It will be almost invisible. If you use too much solder, oh, you can see. You, right. Um, Not great. So you saw, see the solder crept all around the joint. And if you overheat one side of the joint, yeah, we'll get to the next important. I am going to clamp this from both sides so that it is an even heat sink. Every time you touch a piece with a clamp, it draws heat out of the item. So, always try to use the hardest solder that you can in the beginning. Good. We're going to go into the temperatures of solder. There's uh, easy, medium, and hard. One melts before the How other. Are you ladies today? Um, and I'll show you an example of that here in just a second. And I'm going to start with hard. That's a little too much. I want some. Now I am using paste solder. Solder comes in three different varieties. You can have sheet solder, which looks like this. It's basically a little five penny weight sheet of solder. And then you just take your solder cutting pliers. Snip off little what they call uh, pillions, I think, pallions. And we'll work with those in just a second. Uh, everybody has their their opinion on solder. If you ask 20 different jewel rollers, uh, the majority of them are all going to say either sheet solder or wire. Uh, I prefer the paste. I've come and I go back and forth on it over the years. It has flux built into it. So you may ask, what is flux, and what does it do? It 
the, the base is for any kind of soldering too? Um, so long as it's high temperature soldering. If you're soldering copper, brass, uh, gold, silver, anything, it will work on all the loops. Um, I forget where I was going with that after. <laughs> but anyway, if you use either the sheet or the wire solder, you have to use a flux with it. That's what I use. Okay. The flux and the, the wire. Flux. There you go. Now, I like this uh, just because it's already in there and I don't have to stop to reapply flux every two seconds. Uh, especially if the way I solder, I look and go, oh, okay, I need a little bit more. I put more right on top of it. It doesn't have to go into the pickle. There we go. Uh, so so it's I, easier, the base, right? I find it to be. Not everybody is going to feel the same way. But uh, some people look down on paste solder because it has a slightly lower silver content than the sheet and the wire. But it, if we're speaking realistically, the amount is very, very little. So I'll, I'll take the ease of use over a little bit less silver. All right. So what you need to do when you sit down to solder is, is gauge. I'm just <laughs> how much mass is in each half of the joint. Okay, so if I'm using, if I'm soldering a small piece of wire, this is a piece of, I'd say, 18 gauge copper. This is a huge heat sink. It's going to drink up the heat like nobody's business. Now, if I try to solder a piece of wire to that, that will overheat and melt far before this ever gets hot enough to actually solder. So the whole art of soldering is figuring out how much heat to apply to each part that's being soldered and how long you should keep the flame there. So you want to bring everything involved in the solder joint up to the same temperature at the same time. When you're dealing with a joint like this, it's a piece of cake. You've got two very, very similar items. So you just heat them evenly, done. When you're doing something like this, how we, how do you think you'd go about it? Heat the bigger one first. But how? Huh? I would use the screen. Screen? <clears throat> yeah, and heat it from the bottom. Okay. Uh, or you start in the center and move out a little bit and then back to the center. Okay. On a surface. You're both right. Okay. I prefer when soldering something like a large flat sheet with a small item on top, I prefer to heat it from the bottom. Um, that way, not only does the larger piece heat, but solder flows towards the heat. It, that's the only way it can flow. It can't flow away from it. Metal loses its heat very, very rapidly, and it goes from a liquid to a solid very fast. So, if you are soldering two pieces of metal, and especially if you're soldering two different types of metal, say that this bottom piece was uh, silver, okay, and you're using silver solder, and this was a copper piece. If you were to heat this up, and you heat it from above, then you heat the wire, and the solder not only melts and flows on here, but it flows up the wire and contaminates it. Well, not contaminates it, but it uh, discolors it. So if you heat it from below, it can only stay on the bottom. So all the silver solder stays down there where it's supposed to rather than climbing the other part of your joint. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. We'll go ahead and do some fire. Okay. I don't know how to speak English. I don't know. I'm trying, but figure it out. What are you using? Acetylene. Acetylene? Let's go over that when we're done. But, um, depending on what type of torch you're using, I think we can probably work some out. Is it a single gas torch? No, it's that. This? Okay. All right. Now, when you solder, okay, thank you. 
Here's a quick anatomy lesson on the plane. You've got your fuel and your oxygen that come together. You've got some pressure being regulated by regulators down there. And you want the flame to come out in what's called a relaxed flame. See how the flame bends up? You want that. If you've got Okay. If you were to try to solder silver with this right now, it would pretty much vaporize. Uh, this is way too hot. You see this little portion of the blue flame, it's very, very bright, very, very small, and the flame is coming straight out and it's loud and hissing. So, just dial the oxygen back, bring some of the fuel back. Now, watch when it goes from yellow down to blue. Right after it turns there, and it's still it's bent upwards, it's not coming out with a great deal of force. Okay, at this point, now if you're using paste solder, a lot of people get very frustrated with paste solder because they immediately go straight to the joint and they start to heat it up. And the solder will bubble up and fall right off. So what you need to do both sides bring the heat up and you're going to see this what is the temperature right now of that torch uh, I'm not real sure um, I can look that up for you Linda. all right you'll see it start to smoke and then a little bit of flame starts to smoke we're waiting for all the binders to burn off and the flux that's in there excuse me there we go a little bonus piece in the torch there for a second uh, and then once everything's burned off and it's no longer catching on fire then I'm going to start doing circles to bring both sides of it up to temperature. Move it a little closer. over there on the side of the little blog over there. Yeah, when I work at home, I've usually got a tube of solder and a torch in one hand and a solder pick in the other hand and some tweezers. that down into my left there is a fire extinguisher on the floor. Always be prepared. but it's a good strong joint. Let's give that a second. And I forgot to talk about a few other things about the plane. Oh, wow, that's... Making more soot for Brian. <laughs> you should see the look you're getting. <laughs> That's the joy of acetylene. Very hot gas, but it's very messy. Okay, and what I wanted to, to talk about, this is, this right here 
right in front of that blue cone. See how there's the bright blue, there's this out here, and then right there you'll see a little shadowy dark blue area. Mm -hmm. That right there is where you want to be. That's the hottest part of the plate. Okay, so while that is soldering, let's talk about. Just put on a clean shirt. Oh. you should always clean your metal very well before you solder. Uh, I'm not doing that, just to expedite everything. But um, before you solder, I mean, really clean it up. With? Uh, a little bit of abrasive would work. Um, isopropyl alcohol, uh, denatured alcohol, anything to get uh, those polishing pads work really well. Uh, just to get the surface gunk off of that. Mm -hmm. Anything that makes a barrier between the pieces of metal, that's going to cause problems down the road. Uh, now, this is wire solder. And if you end up using this, I recommend that you take each one and you bend the letter of what it is into the end of the piece. Medium, easy, hard. Because this stuff all looks exactly the same once you take it out of the bag and guarantee you are going to put it down and forget all about it. Now, These are the three temperatures of solder. Since this is not paste, I'm going to have to use a little bit of flux. So what does flux do? Anyone want to take a stab at that? Cleans the surface. Some. I don't know. <laughs> what happens when you hit the, the metal with flame? Oxidizes. Hence, yeah. clean the surface. True. Keeps um, it from oxidizing further. There you go. What? Okay. Flux usually contains some sort of boric acid or something that acts very much like boric acid. And what that's going to do is basically when the flame is applied to this, the flux will bubble off the boric acid left behind. It melts and coats the entire surface of the metal. So you've got this liquid, glassy layer over the top that prevents oxygen from the, basically the air we're breathing, from interacting with the heat and the metal. And it prevents that black oxides from forming on the surface, and it allows the solder to get in there, bind the two pieces of metal together without the oxygen interfering. Uh, if the oxides start to form, then the black stuff forms faster, then the solder can get in there and attach to the surface. So, in theory, and, and why do we have different temperatures? If you're joining more than one thing onto a piece, you need different temperatures. When you plan, you're absolutely right. When you plan your piece, sit down on uh, a piece of paper and look at everything. <coughs> Say you're doing a ring. I'm putting a cabochon up here. Uh, that's got to go. We've got to do the bezel. We've got to do the shank. We've got to do the attach the two together and maybe a little bit of decoration. So we have to plan out what can be used when. 
The bezel needs to be very, very strong, so it needs hard solder. That's going to be the first step. The shank needs to be done with hard solder because that takes a lot of abuse. So you do those two pieces with hard solder, and then you put them all together with the medium so you don't open up your previous. Hey, what's up, guys? What's hey, up? Morning. All right, so in theory, we should see these melt from left, or your right to left. So we're going to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of heat to get every all the solder or the flux. See how it turns white? Mm -hmm. The liquid's burned off. Yeah. The boric acid's left behind, and then that will start to melt. Do another later show it. Now it's nice and glassy. Yeah, that's where the flock is doing it. Okay, I thought they were still doing it down with the glass. It's a demonstration. It does have a number. It has a number. Okay, you see how it went? I don't know if this stuff works the way you say it's done. Don't touch it. And then that one, then that one and then that one. And that way, so when you plan out a piece of jewelry and you need to solder one thing right next to another, you choose the next temperature down and that way you don't open up your previous solders. In theory, you're gonna do it anyway. But once you get your practice down, then you can get it. Perfect. All right, let's take a look at that ring. And On the vise. Thank you. Alright, so you've soldered something, it's completely black, it's covered in fire scale. Fire scale is another term for the oxides that form on the outside. So you put it into the pickle. Odd term, I know. But uh, you put it into the pickle and it eats off all the oxides on the outside and leaves you with a fairly clean piece of metal. Uh, depending on how, oof, that really wasn't bad. It's okay, we don't have a loop so we can <laughs> Oh, I'm ashamed. Theory, you should have had a good ring, but glass, we're left with that. So, that's how you do that. Now, other forms of soldering that we need to talk about. Okay, something called sweat soldering. So we need to attach one thing to another, and let's see. Right, I would be too. <laughs> Thank you. They <laughs> um, say, "Hi, I'm Felicia. Be nice I'm to Tom me." Foley. I'm Tom Foley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Felicia. Graziella. 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 Yeah. All right, we're talking about joining two different types of metal. Unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of choices here. But you can pre-apply your solder to a surface. I'm not making any one thing in particular here. Uh, 
So, especially if you're using one type of metal on the bottom, and then you've got another type of metal on the top. We talked about this a little bit at the beginning. And you want to keep the solder from flowing up onto the second half. So, let's give this a little bit of a spritz. And then you heat it from underneath, and the solder that you already have in place is there waiting for something to attach to. So, Usually that's how you do the bezel from the bottom? I, oh, no. If you're going to do a bezel, uh, if you're attaching the bezel wall to the yeah, bezel base. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Yeah, I don't recommend the settling for inside the house too much. Unfortunately, it's very good. Yeah, I keep trying to install one right now. I just used the vacuum cleaner. That'll do it. Okay, you can see the flux whiten up, and then you'll start to see it disappear. There's this little bit of copper we can afford to be. Yeah. purple there. You got one side. Mm -hmm. There's the other side. Go. Now, notice that because I heated from the bottom, there is no solder on top of this wire at all. It stayed right where it was supposed to. Now, with the torch, you can actually drag solder around to wherever you need it. Uh, if you accidentally heat one side of a joint too much, and uh, the solder goes over to one side. You can use that heat to draw the solder back into the middle where you want it. Um, the longer you do this, the better you can get at it. Uh, you can make some pretty extreme changes to solder. You can also almost... You're still, it. however, going to leave a small amount on the surface because it's not going to all just pull back. You're uh, going to give it a I've had your own. some pretty surprising results from time to time. Uh, with some of the rings, uh, when I was a little more on my game, uh, you can, I've messed up and pulled it all the way over to one side and then pulled it back and then got it to center up right in the middle. Leaving no solder on either side. Leaving no solder on either side. Or at least so minimal that it really didn't even... Polishes off. Yeah. Now, uh, solder can polish off. But this type of soldering is not just a surface treatment. It's not like an electronic solder or not like a plumbing solder where it just stays on the surface. And it's really just a glorified glue. Uh, this, well, it is a glue, but rather than just sitting on the surface, the molecules actually open up and the solder gets down into the surface and the molecules close back up and you're trapping the solder underneath the surface of the metal. So, yeah. There will be times when you cannot solder this stuff back out. But I want to show you something neat. Okay. This is something I've been doing for a while, and I've had some pretty good results with it. Let's try. Let's go with the hard one. This is called solder inlay. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried inlay or anybody know what it is. No. Mm -hmm. All right. It's like Mark Henry. Uh, normally when you do inlay, you would cut out a piece from a contrasting metal, like a piece of silver, a piece of copper, uh, silver into gold, whatever it is. And then you would then take a graver and cut a seat for that item. Incredibly hard to do. Um, you can also cut it out of a flat piece of metal and then 
solder it in place and then put the flat piece of metal in. A uh, little bit easier to do. <coughs> I started doing this, I've had some pretty decent results when I was a lot younger in college and I'd sell my stuff. I used to sign the bottom <coughs> of my little sculptures by taking a flex shaft and cutting my name into the bottom of it mm -hmm. and inlaying it with solder and then polishing it flat so it would be okay. copper with a silver signature. Okay. It, it looked pretty good and people wondered how I did it. So. <coughs> This usually takes a fair amount. I have not tried this stamp yet, so I'm not real sure how well it's going to work. What the heck? And we're just basically flooding the design. <coughs> yeah, okay. And I want to try this. Now here I used a pat piece of uh, like eight gauge round and then just ran it through the rolling mill and hit it with some spiral textures. Now you can do that with, uh, you know, for bangle bracelets or cuff bracelets. Mm -hmm. Now this is etching. I kind of wanted to see how this worked uh, because, it, you know, if this works out well, I can see a lot of use in something like this. See what happens. Uh, I tend to do a lot of my soldering up in the air. Uh, I don't know. It seems it seems easier to me. Most people will solder down on the pad. It, it, whatever works for you. Um, I never really talked about the soldering blocks. You've got charcoal, you've got the soft uh, solderite stuff, and then you've got really, really hard silicar. Um, yeah, pretty much. It's uh, very reflective. It's a completely different soldering experience than uh, anything Jerry, else. I don't I like you? it. A lot of people live and die by it, they swear. Um, sure, hang on a minute. I just like to suspend my stuff in midair and then I can heat from the top, heat from the bottom, and everything's yeah. good. So. No wrong. We're just working with solder, you just burn it off. Yep. Yeah, I don't have to be too concerned about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that looks nice. That looks real nice. I'm going to try drawing some of the solder over to where you missed. Doesn't quite want to get into that channel. Always make sure before you use it that you got the right button. <laughs> They tend to look awful similar. Okay. I'm going to go back and add a little bit more uh, just because this process really needs need it to be full in order for it to look right.
go. Is that stuff clean gold too? Well, it's up kind of like we clean stuff off the gold too. Oh yeah. Anything that you've just soldered goes straight in there. Just keep steel, iron. Don't put those in there. See how it's like a light blue? Yeah. That's all the copper that's suspended in the solution. Actually, that brings me to a really good point thing. Um, all the copper that's suspended in there, should iron or steel be introduced to that solution, A, the whole batch is contaminated and you have to ditch it and start over. But it will then take all the copper that's suspended in there, making it blue, and plate it right to the surface of the item. You know. So if you're working with 18 karat gold, that really sucks. Yeah. Okay. But. Uh, so if you put any iron in there, you have to throw it away. Yeah. The solution iron. Uh, the worst one are tweezers and any sort of, like, if somebody. Don't ever let. Special tweezers? Copper. Copper tweezers. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, don't ever let anybody, like, uh, file or sand you. steel at your bench. Uh, then you end up with little microscopic. Pieces of it, and it does not take much. Yeah. And then okay. That will Six. make your life miserable for very long. So, what, how do you know it's a container you put something in? All right, just yeah, you put something in, and it comes out peachy. Mm. Uh, then it's covered in copper. No, don't don't freak, because all it just takes is a quick buff, and you can get it back off of there. Okay. But it's a real pain in the neck when you think you're done. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So this stuff, it's a it's an acid solution. You don't want it on you. You don't want it in your eyes. It's not going to eat your hand off or anything like that. It's just vinegar, isn't it? No. Well, uh, the equivalent of it. It's, it's, it's the same acidity as vinegar. It depends on how strong you make it. And I usually make mine pretty strong. Okay. Uh, you don't want to jump it down the drain. And it's not because of the acid so much, although it's probably not the world's best thing for pipes. Uh, it's the copper that's in the solution. Uh, copper is really bad for any sort of aquatic life, so if you drain anywhere into a lake or something like that, it kills aquatic life like nobody's business. So please don't. Uh, what you should do is take it to a hazardous waste, but nobody wants to drive down there every other week and to drop off pickle. So what I do... Does that stuff expire? It goes bad. No, no, no. Uh, I actually, I usually keep a batch of that for four or five months. Okay. But what I do is I have one of these little containers from the Chinese takeout. I pour it in there and then I just basically let it sit out, preferably under a ceiling fan and where kids and pets can't get to it. And then you just let it evaporate. And once it's evaporated, then you've got a big bucket of dried crystals. You crack this, dump it into a one gallon Ziploc bag and you put it up on a shelf and forget about it till the next four to six months when you need to do it again. And then after a year or two, when you've got so much that you don't want it sitting around, then you take it down to hazardous waste. And you give them a bag full of dry crystals, which they'd much rather have than a whole bunch of fluid. All right, so we've just made these things. So what do we do with them? So that already looks kind of interesting. This one's going to take just a little bit of work. 
Just trying to give it a little bit of a dome to make my life a little easier. Okay, now underneath this little cap of molten silver, there is a design. So what we need to do is sand it until we get to see the design again. Okay. So you guys don't have to sit here and watch me with a file. <laughs> now, I've never tried this with a design stamp. And I think the flaw, oh no, this might work. The flaw is that the design stamp is very shallow. Yeah. So you really got to watch it or else it'll grind right through the design. But if this works, then that opens up all the stuff that we have as design stamps. Yeah. as possible in ways, which I'm excited to find out. Now that's like what, a 320 grid or 150 that you're using right there? Uh, honestly, I have no idea. Okay. I think it's more like a 400 or a 600. Okay. It's, it's pretty smooth. Okay. But you would work like down to finer grits yeah. to get a better polish on it and then oh, yeah. use your once, it on it. Once, once you got it, now, it still needs a little more work, but I think that looks really promising. So let me try this real quick, see what I can get out of it. So what we have here, this is uh, an etch design that I did um, a while back. And basically I've just, I over etched it. So I was using that as my example of what not to do. So now what I'm gonna do is basically try to fill the etch back in with silver. And in theory, since this is much, much deeper than that is, we should be able to get a lot more detail a lot more quickly. somebody that had some of this. I've admit. Yes. The Ub gloves. That's what I use. Ub gloves. <laughs> I use the Ub gloves. Are those little silicone things? Yeah. yeah, I think it still needs a little bit to bring out some more of the copper in the middle. Mm -hmm. 
Now, when they're freshly sanded like this, they are almost the same color. If you give it a little bit of time, maybe could you hand me here? Uh, one of the copper darkeners. Just anything but a silver darkener. Let's see if I can get it to work. Maybe we can get a little bit of contrast. This should darken the copper, and I'm hoping it doesn't darken the silver. So if that works. Basically advanced tarnishing. Well, you can do certain things with uh, like gold. If you do gold and copper, uh, like electroplating. Mm -hmm. uh, eh. No, it's darkening the silver a little bit. You can see some of it. <clears throat> but uh, like if you use liver of sulfur, you mix up a batch of that uh, and you make a design. Okay. I'll show you exactly what I mean. So this okay. was a pattern that I was using on copper. Okay. So I etched that in, then I gold plated the whole thing. In a rhodium? Right, right. Okay. Just, just exactly like that. You sanded it out. Sanded all the gold off of everything on the top, That's what I like. and then dipped it into the liver of sulfur. Liver of sulfur affects copper, but it doesn't affect gold. So it turns all the copper that was exposed pitch black and leaves the gold really, really bright. You know, it it looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks good. Oh, beautiful. <clears throat> so, I don't know of anything that would affect copper and not silver because so unfortunately silver has some of the same things. But um, maybe like the verdigris, and it would turn it green, and then. Uh, we would probably leave the silver alone. Unfortunately, it mm -hmm. takes a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, what else? When you're done, I know we're like, I thought you were just like an open class and you're like class of 10. Would you be able to just show us uh, the rings one more time? Like how to solder a ring? Yeah, absolutely. We want to get, we want to get. I would, wouldn't mind taking another crack at that. Okay. Uh, this one, awesome. you first you shape and then you solder. No, no, solder first. Okay, here's here's the easiest way in the world to so use solder. So I'm gonna make bigger. I'll show you the measure the bagel. Make it a little bit small. Okay. What I did. Well, this was this is pretty much exactly what you guys need to do. So, yeah, I heard you saying that. I kind of know a little bit about it. I've never done it before, but I know you, there's different types of gold that solder to melt in different temperatures. Right. What, how, how, can you buy them or from here? How do you like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So So how many would you have to have for each carrot? Say you got 14 carrot, any like three, two or three different solders? Or? Well, it really depends on the job. Um, if you're doing a ring shank, you probably want to use as hard as possible, unless the ring's already been sized once That's before. That's all we want to do. It's just yeah. To so... You need to be able to spot if it's sized before, and if it was sized before, I'd imagine that's where you would cut the joint and try to remove that piece, so that you're not having to figure out what type of solder that they used. Okay. Could you um, melt that solder off that's already on there? Would you be able to just hit it with a torch and just fall off? Or, mm -hmm. you know, it, once solder becomes part of something, it becomes part of okay. something. Um, there, are, you will find exceptions to that once in a while, but for the most part, so it's harder to size if it's already been sized. 
A little bit, yeah. All right, so I was measuring out, forgive me if I'm wrong. I had a ring sized twice and they sized it different spots. Oh. Okay. The, the first time they sized it, they did it right in the middle. The second time they came over the side and did it. Where so the other one was. He probably so clamped it and tried to avoid that previous yeah. solder. That makes sense. Uh, if you go for the thinnest part of the ring, A, you're not putting as much gold into it. Um, and it's the smallest amount of work that you have to do. Okay. Right. And, and the the, cent, the center part of the shank will also be the furthest away from the, the front and, yes. and the stone and everything, so there's going to be less transfer of heat. Is there a way you can uh, like shield off a section so you don't get sure. into it? Like, is there a spray or something? Like, hey, we'll we'll go into that one in just a second. Let me oh, okay. let me do this one. So I'd measure off right. nine inches of wire. See a million of them. your ends are flush, you want them nice and even, as soon as I can get this file out again. Now the flush cutters do a pretty good job of getting it closed, right? Yes, but you're always going to have to file it with yeah. something. <laughs> Unfortunately with flush, you found it because what? You said yeah, you, you want file. your joint to be as clean as possible. Uh, okay. It's like diagonal or something. Yeah. If it's going to be diagonal, then you need it to be diagonal on the other side. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay, you're making a bracelet. Okay. I thought you were going to make a solder like something you cut. Okay. <laughs> okay, but I usually do these, bend it a little beyond. So that the tension holds the joint together while you're working on it. And where are the eyeballs? <laughs> I can't see what the heck I'm doing. Do you have the glasses here for UV and IR, the tinted, mm -hmm. so sure. that you can see the what's going on better inside of there? Okay. Use different colored labels on those. That's a good idea. <laughs> Easier, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, or put a piece of colored tape mm -hmm. around it. Mm -hmm. I have actually heard of people when they use either the wire or the sheet solder to color it with a uh, mark, mark magic okay. marker. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it'll burn off. Uh, doesn't yeah, I leave when I I rip the glass and like put stuff in the kiln. I I leave my magic marker marks on the glass where I cut it. I don't care. It burns off 250 degrees. Okay, so we're back to balancing it on top of the wire, so go slow. Now is your sink or your clamp far enough away that it doesn't act as a heat sink? Yeah. Okay. Now, any, if, it, if I wanted it to be a heat sink, I'd be putting it up here. Very close. Okay. Yeah. For sterling silver, you cannot use paste. You can? Oh yeah, absolutely. This this is sterling silver solder. I, I just find it's really, it's the it, toughest of any of the solders that I have access to or can afford. And uh, it, I, I can hammer it, I can do whatever I want to it. And it's really tough. It's easier so, than the wire. The wire have to use the both hands all the time. Does it form itself? It, <clears throat> what do you mean? Like it kind of takes its own shape and knows like it's going to go in between. Oh, the metal. Oh, the copper. So it'll just be pretty much done when you're done? And gold's the same way? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You're looking as part of your business to resize rings and things mm -hmm. like that? Yeah. I'll, I want to try to see if it will try to one shop and see if we can do the basic stuff. Oh, it's not bad. Uh, there's so many more stuff, so many more rings we can sell. It's like this stopper will not buy something like this. Right. And then uh, they don't want to go to like a wanna, mall. When we get a chance, I can show you some really easy ways to to basically, I need it one size smaller, pull a lever, cut it one size down, perfectly parallel cuts, yeah. push them together, solder it. I've seen a machine like that, cuts like the two exact cuts that... But yeah, so you have that stuff too, yeah. I want to go. It's like 250 bucks, and yeah. it saves yeah. you a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So 
we put something together before we leave. Alright. That should have been left in there a little bit longer, but. Alright. Still a little messy, but not bad. Let me go get a bracelet mandrel. Yeah, you shake your hammer. Yeah. I guess I have to use it carry it with her. It must be nice just to walk over and see grab whatever tool you want. Oh, yes. You don't, have to, you don't have to look at your MasterCard statement or anything. Gosh. <laughs> I don't know where it gets the nerve. <laughs> A uh, little too big. Give me that. Cannot go much bigger than nine. Then we, we figured that was the maximum size. Okay. I mean, so. I'm just that good that I was able to do it by. <laughs> <laughs> I would think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you put that in there. Now, brass hammer. Has to be bra brass. See. Yeah, I don't have one. If yeah. you hit this, see the the center post. If you hit that with a steel hammer, either the center post or this side will eventually start to bend. Mm -hmm. Too hard. And you'll never get these two halves apart ever again. <laughs> All right. So when you use a brass hammer, the brass hammer is softer than the steel, so all the damage happens to the hammer, which, you know, it's no big deal. All right. This is loud, so careful. If you use uh, sterling silver, it will be much easier. No, no. no. Silver is harder. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. There you that's go. awesome. Scrap gold. Like that. Now, yeah. yeah. And they come in all kinds of different shapes. Yeah, I saw that. That's really cool. I really like it. Not, so now I, I see you know, they have different the fish, so you have to buy one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, 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 the top and the bottom go together. They're a match ah, set. I thought like one will solve no, the problem. No, but no. Yeah. They're, I don't know, 60 bucks each or something. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they're about $50 each. There's six different designs, yeah. uh -huh. and we, we sell out. Every time they come in, we sell out like instantly. You guys have some? We've got, I think I've got two or three designs Let left. Me, yeah, I want to check. see real quick. So it's real nice. I used to, to do that like, like yeah. <laughs> believe it or not. Well, they saw all the ways, but something like that. Adam again, you do nice work. Thank you. What little do you do? <laughs> it's almost like John here. Look at that. There you go. Beautiful. That one's for you. Well, thank you. Hello. All right, that's awesome. All right. Anybody have any questions? Love Come it. on, guys, don't That's be shy. <laughs> You're going to help me with this settling, Tom. I settling. Okay. And you guys want to talk about around?